Chapter 7, Text 2 of Bhagavad Gita Jnanam teham sa vijjnanam idam vaksham ya seshatah yajnatvane ha bhuyon yajnatavyam avashishyate I think now the audio is fine, right? Um, I can increase it to the max. Is it okay now? I hope it is. Himanshu is saying, maybe you can increase the audio from there. So now it's at the maximum. This is all I can do. If you want even more. Okay, good. Fine. <laughs> now it's perfect. Okay. So, Jnanam Teham Sa Vijnanam Idam Vaksham Ya Sheshataha Yajnatva Neha Bhuyon Yajnata Vyamma Vashishyate Jnanam, phenomenal knowledge, Te, unto you, Aham, I, Sa, with, Vijnanam, numinous knowledge. As we see, numinous means spiritual. There, numinous means spiritual. Idam, this. Vakshami shall explain Asheshataha in full Yat which Jnatva knowing Na not Iha in this world Bhuyaha further Anyat anything more Jnatavyam knowable Avashishyate remains per, uh, Translation and purport by Zivangra Sesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Translation I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge both phenomenal and numinous this being known, nothing further shall remain for you to know. So that's the title of today's topic, Achieving Complete Knowledge. So this is the process. So we will read the purport and we will try to study it in depth. Purport. Complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world. Phenomenal means material. Of course, there is another meaning of phenomenal means like a grand thing, something which is extraordinary. But here we are talking about phenomenal means the material world. That's the other meaning of phenomenal. That means where there are phenomenon, phenomena, cause and effect and all these things. So this is in the material world. Uh, complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world, the spirit behind it and the source of both of them. This is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain the above mentioned system of knowledge because Arjuna is Krishna's confidential devotee and friend. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, this explanation was given by the Lord and it is again confirmed here. What is that? Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in disciplic succession directly from the Lord. Therefore, one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge, who is the cause of all causes and the only object for meditation in all types of yoga practice. When the cause of all causes becomes known, then everything knowable becomes known and nothing remains unknown. The Vedas, especially Mundaka Upanishad, chapter 1, text 3 says, Kasmin bhagavo vijnate sarvamidam vijnatam bhavati. So that means once you know the source of everything, bhagavo, which is Bhagavan, um, once we know him, then sarvamidam vijnatam bhavati. We will know everything. So now, if we recap from previous verse, if we see the previous verse, Shri Bhagavan Vacham, Maya Saktamana Partha Yogam Yunjan Madashriya Asam Shayam Samadramam Yatha Gnasya Sita Chrunu. The Supreme Personality of God had said, Now hear, O son of Pritha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full free from doubt. So, as we have established in the previous session of Bhagavad Gita in the 7.1, um, hearing process is very important. Not only hearing process, we have to hear from the right source. And we have to accept in total whatever we have heard from the right source. So, what is the right source? The Supreme Lord, Krishna. He is the all-knowing absolute truth. And he hands down the knowledge in a perfect channel, which is called the Parampara system, the disciplic succession. And all the Acharyas who are pure devotees coming in that succession, unbroken chain, they will carry the exact knowledge of Krishna. 
a non bona fide or a unauthorized parampara is where there is no succession when the means the person who is talking has no guru or he has a guru but he has disobeyed that guru he has a guru who is coming from a sampradaya but he has disobeyed like we have, we have explained that um in gaudiya math that happened and shri prabhupad mentioned that and same thing in iskon also it happened it's still happening so these things uh even if the guru is proper if the disciple is not proper it is still not considered the bona fide sampradaya this is very important to know okay so tat shrunu now here so we have to hear from the right source here arjuna is hearing from krishna or we have to hear from his representative who don't commit mistakes both don't commit mistakes the pure devotee coming in the sampradaya and krishna now what he is asking us to hear how to practice yoga in full consciousness of me how by practicing yoga if we can know me in full know krishna in full free from doubt so this knowing in full is what is explained in the next verse yajnatva neha bhuyonya gyatavyam avashishyate so there is nothing else to be known so how to get this perfect knowledge first of all first of all what is complete knowledge how to know everything so this is definition of complete knowledge here in the in the purport of mentions complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world the spirit behind it and the source of both of them that's it this includes everything of course there is the internal potency there is so many things but if we know krishna then we will know all his energies um, all phenomena which are all um, caused by his potencies nadasya karyam karanam cha vidyate nadat samascha bhadi kascha drishyate parasya shaktir vividhai vashruyate swabhaviki gnana bala kriya cha so complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world the spirit behind it and the source of both of them so this is everything this includes everything so that means all his potencies natasya karyam karanam cha vidyate natat samascha bhyadhi kascha drishyate parasya shaktir vividhai vashruyate swabhaviki gnana bala kriya cha ऐसी परास शक्ति विविधाई वशरू होते हैं स्वाभाविक ही ज्ञान बलक क्रिया चा। So he has multifarious energies, uh, which are acting automatically under his order, and ज्ञान बलक क्रिया। So for any activity uh, that needs to be done, we need to know the know-how, ज्ञान, how to do it. We need to know बला। We have to have the capacity to do it. We have to have the resources to do it, and kriya there has to be the endeavor so if you have only the knowledge but no capacity we cannot do it we cannot even endeavor if you have knowledge and capacity but if there is no endeavor still so that means even even in our personal thing personal uh, level if if one has a talent it is like having the knowledge and capacity or maybe at least capacity but he has to has the knowledge um but even if he has a knowledge and capacity if there is no endeavor nothing will move and even if there is endeavor if there is no sanction of the supreme lord it will not move so of course the lord will not we will not know the lord will sanction or not unless we try so the trying means kriya we have to put in endeavor so first of all we have to endeavor for the service of the lord not anything else um so anyway we have to fulfill these three things jnana bala kriya but swabhaviki for krishna it is swabhaviki it's naturally always already existing he is full in these things so his potencies will act as if automatically just like an autonomous machine may work as if independent of anything else but actually of course it is controlled but we can't immediately see the control it's moving on its own Hmm. So like that, his potencies are like that. So complete knowledge means understanding how everything is working under his direction. You see, knowledge of the phenomenal world, the spirit behind it, and the source of both of them. Now, if you 
if you um, compare that with the modern science they know a little bit of the phenomena of this world and they have no idea of the spirit they have little idea not exactly of the spirit but they know that we are people but they don't know its spirit um, but they know that okay people move or a soul or a person moves something unless there is a personality behind it it won't move right so they vaguely know this a little bit but the source of both of them got completely out of the question so with such a very uh, defective approach to knowledge we cannot know anything we can know only a minuscule part of the entire energy of the lord and that too in a very distorted way distorted view of a minuscule portion of god's energy that's all scientists and philosophers can come up with but complete knowledge you see how much more it is phenomenal world the entire material world how everything is working the spirit behind it you know like we like how this material body is working only because of the spirit the soul inside If the soul is taken out dead so how the spirit and the and what is the nature of the spirit and where it comes from where it goes all these things the movements everything we have to know and the source of both of them so that is complete knowledge first of all krishna define what is complete knowledge now in the previous verse he said nothing will remain for you to know and uh, no sorry that is in this verse the previous verse without a doubt you will know everything asamshayam samagram maam yatha gyasas tachrunu so now he is getting to the specifics of what is that complete knowledge how it looks what what it, what are the components of complete knowledge hmm. so this is transcendental knowledge so transcendental knowledge does not only mean about transcendence i mean in the spiritual world but both the spiritual and material worlds because one has to know both because ultimately both are energies of krishna and if one is interested in krishna sometimes you know um i was thinking way in the beginning but then of course i, I got the answer straight away but the thing is one may ask in shrimad bhagavatam which is amalam pranam which is only meant for devotional service and nothing else but there are aspects mentioned in the bhagavatam that are for example creation of this material world that is matter why are we discussing in a purely spiritual quran spotless amalam puranam so but amalam means only spiritual nothing to do with matter but why are these things mentioned and you know the all kinds of things are mentioned dynasties of this world and you know and even if you see bhagavad gita it is it is uh, at the in the middle of a battlefield where family cousins they were fighting with each other so it looks material i mean what is spiritual about it but when krishna is connected when krishna is interested in something that becomes spiritualized although it may otherwise be material anything connected with krishna krishna's mission that is spiritual so if a devotee that's why krishna uh, prabhupad said in one lecture a devotee is not interested in a battlefield he is interested in krishna and if krishna is interested in a battlefield devotee also becomes interested in the battlefield that's it just like a handpicked husband if his wife becomes interested in something he also becomes interested in that thing if she becomes disinterested in something if she disagrees with something he also will disagree with that just to be in her good books you see so a devotee is is like that of course a handpicked husband that kind of position is condemned there's no individual individuality of the person at all um and moreover under the subjugation of women it's, it's a little bit laugh worthy but in the case of devotee that's the most glorious thing he should be like that is a yes man for krishna and guru so that is our actual position so anyway coming back to this point transcendental knowledge means everything krishna is the original transcendence the ultimate absolute truth and since everything is his emanation even the material world therefore a devotee studies this material world in connection with krishna not without connection with krishna So if you see this verse in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto two, chapter nine, text thirty-four. 
ऋतेर्थम यत प्रतीयत न प्रतीयत चात्मनी तद्विद्यादात्मनो मायां यथा भासो यथा तमः ओ ब्रह्मा वट एवर एपीज टू बी ऑफ एनी वैल्यू इफ इट इज विदाउट रिलेशन टू मी हैज नो रियालिटी नो इट एज माय इल्यूजरी एनर्जी दैट रिफ्लेक्शन विच एपीज टू बी इन डार्कनेस सो इल्यूजरी एनर्जी मीन्स ओनली वेन वी डू नॉट नो यू सी if it is without relation to me has no reality now the question is what is there that is has no relation with krishna there is nothing that is uh, without relation with krishna so everything is reality yes yeah, so, so then what is not reality what is maya what is the illusion it is our ignorance of the fact that everything is connected with krishna that is maya our ignorance of the fact that everything is connected with krishna that ignorance is maya there is nothing that is not connected with krishna so because aham sarvasya prabhu krishna is saying i am the source of all emanations so how come it is not related with him every emanation is related with him now here it is saying if it is without relation that means it is in our mind in our understanding our forgetfulness that we have completely disos- dissociated disassociated or whatever dissociated krishna with his creation and if we start try to study the creation of the lord without understanding the creator and his purpose in creating the creation then we will lose the point of why are we here why what is this world everything we will lose you see so know it as my illusory energy that reflection which appears to be in darkness <clears throat> so this is transcendental knowledge so in other words a person who is in transcendental knowledge he receives it in the deductive process there is inductive process of achieving knowledge and deductive process of achieving knowledge inductive means with um our uh, strength suppose with my senses i will know certain things to an extent and i may build instruments with that knowledge and extend my reach even further for example if if a wall is 8 feet high and i am maybe like my height is about 5 10 5 feet 10 inches now 2 and 1/2 feet i can't see what is beyond that wall but i can take i can make a some kind of a height some stool or something i can put and then now i can stand and i can see over the wall something like that so with instruments yes maybe we can have a little more you know um visibility but again we are for example with the with the stool with the chair or something like that table i can see over this wall maybe but i still cannot see what is beyond the mountain there i still cannot see what is in the sky what is far away so it's still inadequate of inadequate for knowing everything my immediate next surroundings i can maybe know with my instruments so even if i uh create a telescope and look into the sky because my eyes are defective i cannot see i cannot see everything because what is the use of putting uh, spectacles in front of a blind man yeah, however nice the spectacles may be he cannot see instrument may be very nice but he is blind so the, the problem with modern science is this inductive process of uh receiving knowledge is they have too much faith in their sensory perception they think their eyes are perfect or if with instruments we can we will be able to see everything no we cannot see so they don't readily accept the defect hmm so if somebody says i know everything or i know a lot then that becomes a pride you know because nobody will pay attention to him if somebody says i i know for sure then 
people become people will become spe- uh, skeptical of that person or how can you say he knows everything everybody is imperfect so how can he know everything because yes that would be a, a valid conclusion if we only relied on our senses and our mind and intelligence but a devotee now krishna is saying asamshayam samagram you will know everything and that is because we are receiving knowledge from the perfect source who knows everything and we are just accepting his word that's it we may not have realized what krishna has said but because he will never lie satyavratam he is the absolute truth whatever he speaks is also truth absolutely so we just repeat it in toto that's it and that will suffice to have perfect knowledge so even if with our sensory perception we cannot comprehend what is said by krishna we we cannot challenge it because what what power do we have what strength do we have what capacity do we have to challenge that knowledge hmm. but of course that doesn't mean blind accept blind acceptance what is the difference between blind faith and informed faith because when you have faith in something you're always blind for example <clears throat> i believe a news report on the tv saying that such and such thing happened in the other part of the world is it true there is no way for me to verify if i did not see the news bulletin i would not know now that i have seen the news bulletin i still am not able to see what actually happened i am just seeing what this news report is showing me so what how would i know what is happening on the other side then what if it was just a movie it was just a staged act because in movies you can do similar things right you can make some story and then make it happen so when you're more watching a movie and when you're watching a news piece what distinguishes it why do you believe something and why do you say this is a story this is true how do you know you have not checked anything maybe this news piece also is a movie a drama how do we know so informed faith means first of all we always are blind we we will never know whether from news piece we hear or when we have never heard or somebody else rumored all the time we are we have never seen whatever has happened on the other side we have not personally seen with our eyes so we are blind in that sense so what is blind faith and what is proper faith if it is all blind the informed proper faith means the channel which which we are receiving the knowledge should be perfect that has to be established if that is established from what whatever we receive from that will be perfect so that is informed faith uh, proper faith improper faith is not checking whether the source of the knowledge is um authentic or not so that's why hearsay hearsay means whatever you hear so hearing is very powerful yes but if i hear from the wrong source then so blind faith means i don't even know how to check whether the source of knowledge is perfect or not so whatever i hear whatever comes to me i'll just believe and believe i'll be a, i'll be an idiot to believe everything that i hear you see so that is blind faith when somebody says something i just believe without seeing whether that is proper source or not that is blind faith so informed faith means the source of knowledge should be proper and the proper source of knowledge is established by the lord himself that's why the lord makes it easy for us how to have how to not have blind faith uh, how to have proper faith so krishna himself says evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu so all the self realized souls um, what is that imam uh, vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave praha manurikshvakave bravit uh, in the, in this way krishna spoke to such and such person such and such person and is coming down now what is the quali- qualifications of such and such person okay 
So in the second, four, that is fourth chapter, first verse. So fourth chapter, second verse, he says, ah, they must come in parampara. Okay. Okay, fine. I can, I can also produce one list of names. Okay, parampara means list of names. Okay, I'll, I'll produce my list of names. So this is how, how anyone will know. Hmm. Now the thing is, what is the qualification of these persons? They are now the parampara was broken and he is reviving. And here he is mentioning with who, what kind of persons he revives the parampara. Now, before he spoke to uh, sun god, he must have spoken to another person. But somewhere the parampara was broken there. And therefore again he repeated this to sun god. And whatever he spoke to sun god, came down and after that became lost. Therefore he again repeated to Arjuna. Correct? So, he just said that I spoke to sun god and in the parampara system it has been coming down. But it has become lost. And now I am reviving the parampara. I am starting with you, Arjuna. And then he maintained, he mentioned the qualification. Bhakto se mein you are my friend and devotee. Therefore, that means even sun god is also the same qualifications. Brahma is also the same qualifications. Lord Shiva, same qualifications. That means anybody who is in the parampara, everybody must be of the same qualifications, of intimate relation with Krishna, like Arjuna. Otherwise, he will not be, Krishna will not speak to a rascal. No, he will never. Somebody on the platform of Arjuna? Yes. Uh, and it, somebody may claim, no, 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 I am on the platform of Arjuna. Then it, sh it will show in the action. Because Arjuna's action we could see. Uh, how he acted. Okay. Uh, so, we have to know, that's why Arjuna, how he said, oh, I accept everything that you say, Krishna. Uh, so, is that person accepting everything that Krishna is saying? So, by this we can know whether he is connected to the Parampara itself or not. So anyway, so there are so many checks and balances like that. So in this way, that's why it's Sadhu Shastra Guru Vakya Chittinete Koriya Aikya. These are the checks and balance system. Now whatever comes from that, we have to believe with good faith. Because this is infallible source, especially Shastra. And Shastra also we will not know unless it is revealed by the Guru. Right? Because unless we have implicit faith in the Guru, the Shastra will not be revealed to us. And that Guru has to be a living example of that Shastra. So when we hear from a pure devotee, everything becomes revealed, everything makes sense. So our, our lost knowledge our, that we have forgotten will revive from by the mercy of the pure devotee. So in this way, the Parampara is restored or revived so that's the qualification for a person to so the lord wants to explain the above mentioned system of knowledge because arjuna is krishna's confidential devotee and friend in the beginning of the fourth chapter this explanation was given by the lord and it is again confirmed here a complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the lord in disciplic succession and actually i wanted to show something else yeah so, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3. So, here he says, Bhakto Sime Sakha Chete. Now, after this verse, Arjuna asks the question, hey, how come how come you are uh, you have spoken to Sun God? So, he interrupts Krishna's flow. And he asks the question and then he gets it, gets the answer. Okay, I have, we both have taken many births, but I remember everything you don't. So, you were also there actually in that, in the, in the, which means you were also there when I spoke to Sun God, but you don't remember it. So, this is why I come every time. Hmm. I come every time to re-establish principles of religion. So, coming back to the point, he says, because in the third verse he said, because you are my devotee, I will explain to you again the science. So, what is that science? Here, starting with 4.9. Janma karma chame divyam evam yovati. Actually, this is also in connection with the previous one, which is the Lord's appearance for re-establishment of religious principles so that's why he takes birth that's why he acts so this is the first thing in knowledge to know the supreme lord and once we know him then of course we, to get to the point of knowing the supreme lord we must be questioning first of all who we are okay we are part and parcel of krishna okay who is krishna now so then once we know krishna we will not only understand ourselves but also 
every time so he is the source of everything so he is the end of knowledge once we understand him everything is known that's why janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tatvatah tyaktva deham punarjanma nayati maam eka sorjana anybody who knows this that means the lost knowledge which i am which i so spoke to sun god and was lost i am again repeating to you what is that knowledge and uh, this is the knowledge uh, you have to know about me and many people in the past like sun god and others they have being freed from attachment fear and anger this is 410 being freed from attachment fear and anger being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me many many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me and thus they all attain transcendental love for me so a lot of people it's a tried and tested method but it's not tried and tested because oh because they tried and tested it's just testimonial it will always work even if nobody su- become successful by the process it will work the only reason why people did not become successful is because they did not follow the process that's the only reason but krishna is saying you know there are many who follow the process and attain success of course they are the minority manushya nam sahasreshu out of millions one will attain success hmm. um but such many many of such people are there hmm who have attained success in the past and um, he explains the whole you know his here also in the 415 he repeats that all the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature therefore you should perform your duty following in their footsteps and how to perform the duty what is what is the type of work we should do everything he was explaining in the fourth chapter like that and then yagnyas and then everything so going back 72 so you see in the in the beginning of the fourth chapter this was explained and, and now he is confirming again only by the devotee of the lord in disciplic succession directly from the lord complete knowledge can be achieved there is no other that's why krishna is saying shrunu me tat shrunu you hear from me therefore one should be intelligent enough no from krishna means no from him or his devotee pure devotee therefore one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge hmm. now what the scientists are doing here is they are having faith in their senses imperfect senses and they are thinking this instrument will make me see uh, th- so far and so minute microscope telescope so many things to see small things big things different things night vision so many things they have to augment their um, sensory perception but how much ever we may we may augment we 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 it's actually very very small expansion to what we can see there's so much we cannot see but the thing is they use their mind to extrapolate whatever they have seen and they were they will based on that tiny sample of experience they will come to conclusions about the entire vastness of existence and that is a fallacy now um, this sampling sample experience um with my imperfect that's why they're coming to you know conclusions like there is where there is life in the universe why is it all empty they have no answer for this uh, but they cannot see that's the thing whereas we have information that full of life the whole universe is full congested with the life congested is the word so that because it is we are accepting the word of the vedas now you may say that is blind faith that's not blind faith that's faith in the correct channel now if a fake news channel comes up with a wild story i would not believe hey, come on how can you make it is a scam they are just putting out fake news so if it is an authorized channel yes just like a doctor i wouldn't want to go to a doctor to operate on my body um without knowing that he is a doctor now when i go to the doctor he will have his qualifications there or at least he is in the government hospital government so we have faith in government hospital that okay they at least one employee somebody who's an out and out idiot i mean who has zero knowledge about medical science so based on that faith in a in an authoritative institution or a 
system we are accepting that this person is a doctor he knows what he's doing and also when he talks we can understand hmm. we can understand more about him. so that is informed faith that's why we as at least we go to a clinic to get treated if i have a problem i will go to a clinic or hospital because that's where i can find a doctor so although i may not know about my body he will know and how i know he will know because he's in that hospital or clinic which is registered in the with the with the government so I, i'm i'm having faith that the government will give license only to those who are actually qualified so based on that i am making my decision of going there to get treated i would not go to a what is this uh, convenience store to ask about treatment and i don't ask people look on the street okay what what do you think what i should do i have this problem of what i should do what i should do what i should do i just go on the bus stop and ask everybody there and i go to the train station and aeroplane everybody climbing the aeroplane and i will ask what is going on in my body <laughs> what, what, what is that that's not how i you know find out right so i have to go to the proper person then i can have faith in that person because he is qualified ha huh. so why i i go under the knife why why a person agrees to go under the knife why he agrees to be operated by a doctor what if the doctor does something okay the risk is still there human error can happen but still you know we we hope that nothing would happen and he knows what he's doing why how much risk we are taking so because we have faith in some system an, an author, authorized system there has to be a system so if we look at anything we will we always place our faith in something hmm. otherwise the da- world is very dangerous and any time anything can happen how are we confidently making some steps because of having faith even though we may not rationalize it but actually this is the background of that faith hmm. because these these authoritative uh, authorities are in place for different reasons different authorities health health authority there is news authority there is you know, everything there is an authority police there is there uh, everything so similarly in spiritual life it's not just whatever i want to do whatever i feel like you know feel good phenomena uh, i feel good doing this so it is good are right? people different people feel good for different things some people feel very good when they rape it doesn't mean it is good no it is not so um he is punished so if feel good is nonsense or i i you know i feel like this is all nonsense authority whatever authority says that is correct hmm. now that authority has to be 100% correct and therefore krishna is a perfect authority whereas human authority may be imperfect human governments may be imperfect human uh, whatever authority may be imperfect but if they follow the codes given by god the law given by god then they will be perfect even though they may be human that's why king is called naradeva naradeva means the representative of god among humans in other words not just he takes the worship of god but he has to rule the citizens like god will do god for for krishna everybody is his children sarvayoni shukantaya aham bija pradah pita i am the father of all species of life uh, so he sees everybody as his children so a king also should see like that everybody as his children and he has to take care of even the animals because he is representative of god god sees like that he also has to see like that so in that way he has to rule and the state laws are in complete synchrony with in fact they have no separate constitution there was no separate constitution before nowadays there are so many constitutions and they pass bill and then they take out something and put something and take out something whatever they want it has nothing to do with the laws of nature whereas previously there was no separate constitution manu samhita manu smriti and the vedas puranas shruti smriti these are the shastra and the brahmanas they quote from these shastra these these constitutions given by krishna and the ruler would act on those guidelines then everything will be proper the whole world everybody will be employed and everybody will be working towards krishna consciousness 
whole life is fully utilized properly human life hmm. now you see how much disconnection there is because the government law is one thing the god's law is another thing and it's like you know in fact so much so that religion has become a problem to deal with it's see, it's seen as a problem instead of a, being a solution to all problems because there is no proper governance the religion also has become corrupt and because there is no proper religion the government has become corrupt the whole thing is corrupted the whole scenario is corrupted nothing is in order hmm. so therefore here it is said one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge who is the cause of all causes and the only object of meditation in all types of yoga practice when the cause of all causes becomes known then everything noble becomes known hmm. because everything is effect of that cause we will know okay why this has happened why that has happened hmm. and nothing remains unknown vedas say kasmin bhagavo vijnate sarvam idam vijnatam bhavati that is the that is the root of everything if we know krishna we will know everything that is exactly what is said in the 15th chapter also 1519 यो मेवूो जानाति पुषोत्तम स सर्वजति मर्वभावेन भारत हुवर नोज मी एज अ सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड विदउट डाउटिंग ईज द नोवर ऑफ एवरीथिंग हि देर फॉर एंगेज इन सेल्फ इन फुल डिवोशन ऑफ सर्विस टू मी ओ सन ऑफ भारत सो हाउ इज मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज वर्किंग देर आर द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मेटीरियल नेचर विल बी एक्सप्लेन लेटर ऑन इन भगवदगीता and then how the living entity is moving the movement of living entities um, how that is happening that is explained in the second chapter and also in the 15th chapter will be explained uh, the three modes how they act and how by the association with these modes the living entity develops desires and qualities and in that way he achieves his bodies and this way the transmigration has been going on and how with different modes we will rise or fall and how to eventually come out everything that is why this whole thing is perfect science bhagavad gita we will know everything by knowing bhagavad gita that's why it is said ekam shastram devaki putra gitam in fact the same gita mahatmya it is said um, gita sugita kartavya kimanyai shastra vistarai um, mukha padma advane srita gita sugita kartavya kimanyai shastra vistarai um what is that just like that i forgot chant is every day ha ah, ya swayam padmanabhasya mukha padma advani srita so it is spoken directly by the lord and there is no other book that is required and bhagavatam says the same thing ah, kim va parai rishwara there is no shrimad bhagavate mahamuni krite kim va parai so there is no other book needed bhagavatam one book will have all the signs that you need to know see so we have to know like that from krishna that's that's called deductive process of acquiring knowledge when we take the knowledge from the perfect source that's it. he is our instrument to see just like the scientists have instruments which are is this telescope microscope or whatever sonograph or whatever they want to call them call it but our instrument is krishna krishna that's it. shastra that's a shastra chakshu shastra chakshu means our lens instead of telescope microscope our sense lens is shastra that is the way to properly see everything so whatever he says that's it. that's perfect vision so in, in other words we have to know both so a transcendentalist transcendental knowledge means all this right so he therefore engages himself in full devotional service to me o son of bharat so if we look at bhagavad gita chapter 2 text 16 nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate satah ubhayor api drishtonta stvana yostatva darshibhi those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent which is the material body there is no endurance and of the eternal the soul there is no change this they have concluded by studying the nature of both they have studied so now they did not study oh this is matter we should not study about it it is all material no it is not if we remain naive and not discriminatory then we we just cannot um we have to know what we have to be attached to and what we should not be attached to 
we just can't uh, be naive about everything it's like if um like for example i'll give you a good example <laughs> yesterday you're yeah, not yesterday actually for the past few days there has been a news that is going on in singapore and the case is being um, whatever developments in that case are being shown in the news so there is a bank ocbc bank here yeah. overseas chinese banking corporation so their customers having are, are being scammed um and about 470 customers have been cheated of 8.4 million dollars i think hmm it about 8 8 plus million dollars were uh taken away so what caused so the bank did not do anything wrong none of its security was breached but these scammers they set up websites which will look exactly like the bank website but the url will be of course different and then they used to send text messages they somehow somehow got anyway that that has to be investigated i don't know the case is still going on somehow they got the phone numbers of these ocbc bank customers which suggests maybe there is a breach somewhere which is why the leak of phone numbers happened do not know um that is being investigated but accordingly the according to the news there is not no breach on the ocbc side bank side so anyway the point is from the, they have received sms as if like ocbc as if by the bank and they said oh your card has been blocked because of something uh, you have to um, provide this clarification and then some link was given and the link you know they they clicked on the tap on the link and then went to that and then it looked exactly like the bank website login everything their username and password and that's when the scammers got the username and password and you, they used that to um, you know actually go into the bank and siphon out the funds so in this way they have um cheated now the customers the reason why they got cheated was that they did not pay attention when a look when a link looks like when they showed some snapshots of the links on the on the screen it looks horrible i mean something something dot xyz which bank will have dot xyz as a i mean you should know little bit at least ocbcbank.com ocbc.com something the at least the link should be proper so if i don't check if i don't know what is right and what is wrong i may take the wrong thing for the right being too naive and i saw even the messages the sms's themselves the grammar was horrible the sentence doesn't start with a capital letter usually when when it comes from a real bank it's all properly formatted grammar gra- grammatically it's all proper but this was so bad i mean it it, it looks so fake but they got scammed they lost their life savings 10 years some people 12 years they worked hard 14 years yeah one one person they lost everything so similarly if we do not know both what is material and what is spiritual we may take the material for the spiritual and we may consider spiritual as material and i'll show you this is explained in the 18th chapter 30 31 and 32 now i will show you 32 first because this is religion in the mode of ignorance if religion is in the mode of ignorance we do not know what is material what is spiritual we don't know this clearly then we will be scammed that's why there are so many cheaters out there rascal gurus uh, who are cheating wholesale people because they are posing as religion just like this this guy the scammers posed as a bank and the siphoning funds out so adharmam dharmam iti ya manyate tamasavrata sarvarthan viparitamscha buddhi sapartha tamasi now that understanding which considers irreligion to be religion and religion to be irreligion under the spell of illusion and darkness and always strives in the wrong direction of partha is in the mode of ignorance you see this is what happens when we are in ignorance so that's why to know everything we have to know what is material also just like 
to safeguard ourselves we have to know what the scammers or the criminals will do so we can safeguard we know we should know what is a scam and what is right i just can't blindly you know uh, do everything and i have faith in everything so that was what blind faith blind faith they did not check anything hmm. see 1831 you see the previous verse the, just now it was tamasi it was in the mode of ignorance now that means in the in the ignorance what is religion will be considered a religion what is religion will be considered a religion but in passion there is confusion on what is religion and what is religion they, they don't know yaya dharmam adharmam cha karyam cha karyam eva cha ayathavat prajanati buddhi hisa partha rajase ayathavat imperfectly knows prajanati hmm. ayathavat O son of Pritha, that understanding which cannot distinguish between religion and irreligion, between action that should be done and action that should not be done, is in the mode of passion. Now, this cannot also be also be attributed to that that bank case. So, if if I see the URL, if I see the URL and then see its dot x y z, I mean, which bank? I mean, for how many years I have account with that bank and did I see an x y z at the end? And how can I believe? So. but this is what happens when we don't check and this now scams are usually not as common right like only the like 470 people were scammed of course it's a lot in singapore but out of many thousands or even maybe millions but in the case of spiritual life it's hardly hardly can we find a person who is not scammed <laughs> because they absolutely do not know what is what how to check what to check against at least i know the, the bank url what is the real url and is it matching with that now i don't know what is the real religion also how do i know this is correct or this is wrong how do i make even a decision so people do not know anything it is very dangerous to live like that it's very dangerous therefore from the very beginning of life we must know what is correct what is wrong now, how to know that that is explained in the 16th chapter here तस्मा शास्त्र प्रमाण ते कार्यकार्यवस्थि ज्ञावा शास्त्र विधानोक्त कर्म कर्तमहसी वन शुड डे फॉर अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज ड्यूटी एंड वॉट इज नॉट ड्यूटी बाय द रेग्युलेशन ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स नोइंग सच रूल्स एंड रेग्युलेशन वन शुड एक्ट सो दैट ही मे ग्रेजुअली बी एलिवेटेड सी दिस हाँ सो फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्चर्स वी हैव टू नो दट्स वाई कृष्ण वेद पुराण कौलिला माया मुग्ध जीवर नाही स्वतः कृष्ण ज्ञान जीवर कृपाय कैल कृष्ण वेद पुराण द कंडीशन सोल कैन नॉट रिवाइव हिज कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस बाय हिज ओन एफर्ट बट आउट ऑफ कॉजलेस मर्सी लॉर्ड कृष्ण कंपाइल्ड द वेदिक लिटरेचर एंड इट्स सप्लीमेंट्स टू पुराणस टू एजुकेटर्स सो दैट वी कैन मेक इनफॉर्म्ड डिसीजंस सो दैट फुल फेथ इन कृष्ण लाइक अर्जुन सेड व्हाटएवर यू से कृष्ण आई विल बिलीव आई बिलीव इट it is not blind because he said that to the right person <laughs> if he said that to anybody else it would have been wrong but because he said that to krishna he is right the same thing if he said the same exact thing to anybody else in this world he would have been wrong so krishna and the pure devotee who is coming in the authorized sampradaya who is an intimate associate of krishna like arjuna was Ah, uh, such a person. They are to be absolutely believed, absolutely full faith. Hmm. That's why we quote shastra. That's why we quote the pure devotee. Why? We quote the acharya's commentaries, Prabhupada's purports. Why? This is his commentary, Prabhupada's commentary. So, whatever they say is perfect. Whatever the shastra says is perfect. This is called sadhu shastra guru, vakya. so the sadhu is predecessor acharyas uh, so they are also guru you know if we mangalacharan prayers vande guru um, vande guru shri utpada kamalam shri gurun vaishnavamscha gurun means plural gurus 
these are all the predecessor acharyas and also our current acharyas disciples who are shiksha gurus they are also gurus predecessor acharyas they are also gurus uh, so gurun principle is one they will say the same thing unison in the message there may be different personalities but the message is one in that sense guru tatva guru is not different uh, one guru does not say the krishna is god and another guru comes and says shiva is god no that never happens that never happens if they are coming from an authorized sampradaya they will both say the same thing there is no uh, disagreement in that that's why they are called vaishnavas servants of vishnu they serve vishnu so in the isha upanishad also this is explained we have seen the other day as well isha upanishad 11 vidyam cha vidyam cha yas tad vedo bhayam sah avidyaya mrityum tirtva vidyaya mrtam ashnute only one who can learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of immortality side by side we have to know so somebody asked that side by side means okay i will go to school material knowledge and i'll come to temple spiritual knowledge side by side no 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 you cannot know about material world from the materialist they themselves do not know the material world you have to know about the material world also from the spiritualist from krishna that is the meaning of transcendental knowledge material knowledge we are not talking about material knowledge when we are talking about knowledge of matter material knowledge means um knowledge or or information that will further our sense gratification in this world that is material knowledge information that will further our material i mean uh, sense gratification knowledge of matter means knowing what matter is in its context with the supreme absolute truth who is the source of even matter and spirit so knowledge of matter is different from materialistic knowledge so we are we have to know knowledge of matter and knowledge of matter involves also the understanding of materialistic knowledge which is binding and to understand that it is binding see the person the problem with the materialist is he doesn't even know that he is being bound by that knowledge because this is what happens when we don't have a proper perspective proper context if we don't have in other words if we don't have knowledge from an authorized source like krishna or his authorized representative the spiritual master in parampara system then this is what happens to such a person very very instructive verses in the fifth canto para bhavastha vada bodh jato yavan jignyan sat atma tattvam ಜಿಜ್ಞಾಸಂಗ್ right yeah as long as see yavat as long as we don't inquire about atma tatvam the transcendental knowledge atma tatvam means again krishna matter spirit everything if we don't inquire about these things and know it is a defeat why yavat kriyas as long because in abodha okay before we come here abodha means ignorance and then this kriya so if you know the
this verse from Vishnu Puran, 6761. Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta Kshetra Gnyakya Tathapara Avidya Karma Samjnanya Tritiya Shakti Rishyate. Avidya Karma. You see, the third Shakti, which is the nations, the Maya, it does two things, Avidya. It, we will not have complete knowledge. Hmm? We will not have knowledge. We will be in ignorance. Avidya. So what happens next? Kriya or Karma. Same thing. Karma or Kriya is the same thing. Fruitive activity in this material world. If we don't have Vidya, then we will have fruitive activity in this world. Because we will chase after material sense gratification. We will chase after the fruits of action. And we will keep on acting like that and taking life after life. So, if you come back to this verse, Parabhavastavad abodha jato. Abodha means ignorance. Yavanna jignyasata atma tattvam. And if we don't enlighten ourselves with actual knowledge, Yavat kriyas and produce of that ignorance, as long as we are engaging in fruitive activity, Tavat, you see, Yavat Tavat. Always you see this, this is another tip for uh, knowing verses. Some verses are like this, Yavat Tavat, Yatha Tatha, um, or um, Yena Tena. So, Yada Tada. Um, you see, for example, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya, whenever there is a Dharmasya glanir bhavati bharatam with the decline of religious principles. Abhyutthanam adharmasya. Adharmasya is increase. Uh, irreligion will increase. Predominant rise in irreligion. Tada. Atmanam srajamyaham. Yada yada dharmasya. Tada. Yada tada. Yena tena. Yatha tatha. Yavat tavat. So, we can, we can, yeah, yatra tatra. Good. Rajeshwari Mataji is getting it. So, we can see that kind of verses. So, there are actually, I'm, I'm, for my own knowledge, I'm just compiling different kinds of verses. Different style of verses. So, maybe when time is right, I will share that. But, you see, Yavat Tavat. You see, Parabhavas Tavat, Abhodha Jato, Yavanna Jignyasata Atma Tattva. When we will be in ignorance? As long as we don't inquire into the Absolute Truth. Tavat. Until then, we will be ignorance. Now, again, there is another Yavat. Yavat Kriyas, as long as we engage in fruitive activity based on their ignorance, Tavat again, Idam Manovai Karmatmakam Yena Sharira Bandha. Cause and effect. Yavat Tavat. As long as this is true, this is true. This will happen. Like you know, in um, computer logic, if you have, I think Rajeshwari Mataji is master in computer, com computer applications. So, <laughs> in in computer applications, you have programming language. So, in programming, there is logic, there is coding. So, if else, you know, I think those who know a little bit of computer programming, they will know if else conditions. So, if this is true, then this has to happen. If this is true, if this, else if this is true, then this has to happen. So, if else, if else. So, similarly, Yavat Tavat. Yatra Tatra. Yatra Tatra is where there. Hmm? Prajeshwari <laughs> Mataji is. <laughs> she actually studied that. But of course, because long time, haven't been in connection with them. But now she is very good with uh, spiritual codes. So that is more important. All the material coding, what is the point? Right? So, Yavat Kriyas, Tavat Idam Manovai Karmatmakam. So, as long as we engage in fruitive activity, our mind is engrossed in karmatmakam. And what, what is the consequence of that? Yena sharira bandha. By which? Which in turn produces sharira bandha. If this, then this. Which in turn produces this. So, sharira bandha. And that means repeated birth and death. Abodha jata. If we don't know transcendental knowledge. Now Krishna is saying you know it completely. Asam, asam shayam samagram maam. Completely you should know. If you don't know, this is going to ha happen. We've got to become stuck in this material world with this sharira bandha. 
because of fruitive activity. Even in Krishna consciousness, when we start, we, we are still not devoid of that fruitive mentality yet. It takes a long time of practice before we can come out of that. Because we are ingrained habit of thinking in a fruitive terms. If I do this, I should get this. If I do this, I should get this. Uh, we don't realize that actually the sanction of the Lord is everything. Uh, we, so, now, translation. As long as one does not inquire about the spiritual values of life, one is defeated and subjected to miseries arising from ignorance. Be it sinful or pious, karma has its result and actions. If a person engages in any kind of karma, yavad kriyas, ah, his mind is called karmatmaka. Tavad manovai karmatmakam. Ah, and as long as the mind is impure, consciousness is unclear. Karmatmakam. And as long as one is absorbed in fruitive activity, he has to accept a material body. Next verse. Evam evam mana karma vasham prayunte avidya yatman yupadhi yamane pritirnayavan mai vasudeve namuchyate deha yogena tavat. Again, tavat, yavat, tavat. Yavan, yavan mai. Actually, yavat mai, but. Sandhi, that's why Yavan Mai. So it is Yavat and here Tavat. So Evam Mana Karma Vasham Prayunte Avidya Yatman Yupadhiyamane. When the living entity is covered by the mode of ignorance, he does not understand the individual living being and the supreme living being, and his mind is subjugated to fruitive activity. Karma Vasham. Vasham means to be captured by karma. This is called Urudamni Baddha. Prahlad Maharaj said Urudamni Baddha. Damni means. Like Damodar, Dama means tie. Udar means belly. Dama Udar. One whose belly is tied. He is called Damodar. So, the Damni, Uru Damni Baddha, you know, this verse 7 531. Nate Vidu Swartha Gatim Hivishnum Durashaya Bahirarthamanina. Andha yathandha irupaniya manas te pishatantriyam urudam nibadhaha. So, apisha, api isha, to the laws, to the ropes or laws of material nature, isha tantriyam, urudam, urudam, uru means very strongly. Damni cords, um, the rope, badha bound. So, what is this rope? rope is this karma, karma vasham nobody else is uh, binding us we ourselves <laughs> we do something stupid and get you know like the hunter spreads out a net yes he spread out a net but i will not be trapped into the net unless i do something stupid and go down there hmm. so that's why he lays traps for us to become for, for the animal, for the bird to become trapped in the net. Or the fish, fish is also, there's a bait and the hook, you know. So the fishing net is there and all this thing. So, Maya also has traps for us. And we always fall for it. And then, get into this Maya Jal, network of Maya. And we become entangled. Karma Vasham. And because we have to experience the result of our actions, we have to take birth to experience those actions in this way. Prayungte acts. Evam mana karma vasham prayungte avidya yatman yupadhiyamane. When one is covered by, when the living entity is covered by this um, fruitive activity, the mind is covered. Preetirna yavan mai vasudeve. As long as we don't have a preeti or a Natural attraction for Vasudeva. Then Namuchate Deha Yogena Tavat. Until then, Yavat Tavat. Preetirna Yavan. Mai Vasudeva. As long as we don't have spontaneous attraction for Krishna, until then we are not going to have release from the Deha Yogena. From the um, event of taking repeated birth and death. We will not be released. 
so therefore now it is very important see how important this is devotional service and with that we can easily come over this nistraigunya bhava arjuna so we have to take to this uh, strongly and for that we have to understand what is what we cannot be cheated on this path hmm and there are many cheaters who will come on the path many many cheaters i think we have we have studied this before we'll just um, glance through it again 7:15 so vidharma par dharmascha abhasa upama chala chalaha अधर्मशाखा पंचेमा धर्मज्ञो अधर्मवत्यजेत एक्चुअली इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट्स वी हैव इट्स गुड दैट वी हैव कम अपॉन दिस सी धर्मज्ञ वन हु इज अवेयर ऑफ रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल्स ही शुड आल्सो नो व्हाट इज अधर्म नॉट धर्मवत मींस धर्मज्ञ मींस ही ओनली नो धर्म ही डजंट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट द अधर्म नो 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 ही नोस फुल्ली वेल व्हाट इज अधर्म हम and you should give it up knowing where is the line where what is dharma what is adharma everything you have to know with absolute certainty that we can know when we hear from the right source parampara system proper bona fide spiritual master so dharma gya adharma vatyajet you see there are five branches of irreligion appropriately known as irreligion with dharma religious principles for wo- for which one is unfit para dharma pretentious religion abhasam analogical religion upadharma and cheating religion chala dharma one who is aware of re- real religious life must abandon these five as irreligious that means he must know that these are you see he in fact so much division so much categorization of what is we can we can just say okay this is a religion no what kind of religions that category five categories of religions so in that depth in that granular level we have to know what is a religion not just uh, this is dharma anything other is adharma so this is adharma this is adharma in granular level we have to know what kind of adharma it is also see how much knowledge is given dharmagnya adharma vatyacet purport any religious principles opposed to the principle of surrendering to the lotus feet of the supreme personality of god krishna are to be considered religious principles of irregularity or cheating and one who is actually interested in religion must give them up in the beginning of the भागवतम इट इज सेट कैतव धर्म धर्म वट इज धर्म प्रोजित कैतव अत्र परमो निर्मत्सराण सता ऑल कैंड ऑफ चीटिंग रिलीजन आर कि आउट फ्रॉम द भागवतम वट इज चीटिंग रिलीजन मेटीरियली मोटिवेटेड रिलीजन सो देर इज मिस्चर ऑफ दिस इन दैट एंड फोकस इज ऑन मैटर इन द नेम ऑफ रिलीजन दट इज नॉट रिलीजन सो वी हैव टू नो दैट वी टू नो there is an example in drama and um of course sita is mother sita is perfect but this is a drama see the whole thing is to teach us also lessons right so when ravan he came in the garb of a sanyasi when ram and lakshman were away after they went after the uh, magical deer from the ashram so sita mother sita was alone in the ashram and ravan came in the garb of a saint and mother sita was very naive about it and just looking at the garb she accepted this is a saint and faithfully served she was not on her guard um so one can be and she was helpless you know because both men were out who could protect her they were out and she was left alone so we also are helpless unless we have the protection of krishna like if sita has protection of ram ah yes so we have to take protection of krishna what is that protection ah sadhu shastra guru we have to be protected by his statement we have to take his protection not that krishna will protect me but krishna's protection is there and i am here i don't take to it what what does that mean that means i don't take to the process given by krishna and i want krishna still to protect me i am not doing what i have to do but krishna has to do what he has to do ah, what is that what kind of contract is that nonsense contract so we have to do what we have to do we have to hold on to the religious principles then we can be saved um 
one should simply follow the instructions of Krishna and surrender unto him. To do this, of course, one needs very good intelligence. Uh, see, not simply some fool. One should simply follow the instructions of Krishna and surrender unto him. To do this, of course, one needs very good intelligence, which may be awakened after many, many births through good association with devotees and the practice of Krishna consciousness. Um, everything but the principle of religion recommended by Krishna, the Sarvadharma Parityajya Mamikam Sharanam Raja, 1866, should be given up as irreligion. So that is our easy test tube. Whether something is irreligion or religion or should be done or should not be done. Whether Krishna is sanctioned? No? Give it up. This is nonsense. So now, we should only know in, uh, we should know thoroughly what Krishna said that we can do and what we cannot do. If we know thoroughly what Krishna said, then immediately upon seeing something, we will, we will be able to identify whether this is sanctioned or not. We have to know that knowledge beforehand. If we see something without this knowledge, we will not be able to come to a decision whether I should do this or not. Therefore, knowledge is important beforehand itself. So, or if, if I am not in a position, I have just started or I am not equipped. So, I have go to the sadhu. So, they will show you references from Guru and Shastra. Uh, and then they will show, oh, this is this is the plan of action you should take. Uh, in this way, we have to guide ourselves like that. So, anything that leads us to surrender to Krishna, that is actual religious principle and we have to follow it under the guidance of the bona fide guru and uh, the disciples and the devotees. So now let us look at explanation of each of these five types of irreligion. Dharma badho vidharma syat paradharmo anya choditaha upadharma stupakhando dambho vashabda bhichalaha Religious principles that obstruct one from following his own religion are called vidharma. Religious principles introduced by others are called paradharma. A new type of religion created by one who is falsely proud and who opposes the principles of the Vedas is called upadharma. An interpretation by one's jugglery of words is called chaladharma. This is done by Shankaracharya. And nowadays, so many Babas they are coming up with new, new types of religion. Nonsense, like our uh, Asad Guru of Isha Yoga and similar other persons, Vivekananda. All these people are, you know, complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. Because these, these are the things they are doing. They are not sanctioned anywhere. Next. Yastvich chaya kritaha pumbhir abhaso hyashramat prithak sar svabhava vihito dharma kasya neshtaha prashantaye. Okay. The second part of the thing we don't read because it's continuing to the next part of the conversation a pretentious religious system what is that abhasa uh, manufactured by one who willfully neglects the prescribed duties of his order of life is called abhasa a dim reflection or false similarity so in this way we have to understand what is to be done and what is not to be done and if you go back to the 1832 there is a nice thing that is said in the purport See, intelligence in the mode of ignorance is always working the opposite of the way it should. Uh, it accepts religions which are not actually religions and rejects actual religion. It accepts religions which are not actually religions and rejects actual religion. Men, men in ignorance understand a great soul to be a common man. They take a great soul to be a common man and accept a common man as a great soul. They think truth to be untruth and accept untruth as truth. In all activities, they simply take the wrong path. Therefore, their intelligence is in the mode of ignorance. And there is a practical example of this in Chaitanya Chaitanya CC Madhyam. Um, I think it's uh, 18.99. Very in, in important insight is given in the purport there by Srila Prabhupada. Also. <laughs> so, this, this is part of a story which happened. 99 and 101, both are important things are there in the purport there. Now we will go to 99. So this context is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to have um, one um, assistant as he was traveling. There was one assistant called Balabhadra Bhattacharya. And this Balabhadra Bhattacharya, uh, one day, you know, 
the villagers in as you know, chaitanya mahaprabhu was traveling in vrindavan there so the villagers there um, they said oh we have seen krishna on kaliya in the um, ocean oh sorry sorry uh, vrindavan there yamuna sorry oh we have seen uh, krishna you know and um, he was hey, i also want to see krishna so he came to chaitanya mahaprabhu and he asked you see at that time Balab- he he got influenced by the public opinion so what it was was that in the night it was a fisherman with a boat out in the water i think it's vrindavan or was it the sea anyway um he was out in the in the in the water distant and then he his boat had a lamp you know lamp and then people who saw from the bank they saw hey somebody you know there's a they thought that like to be the jeweled hood of kaliya and that they, they accepted the fisherman as the krishna and the boat as a kaliya serpent and in this way they could not see people properly and they came to conclusion hey krishna darshan krishna is giving darshan kaliya dar, kaliya daman darshan you know they were all like you know excited and all and everybody hey yeah, let's just take, take darshan everybody was going and chaitanya mahaprabhu was sitting in the same room he is krishna people are not coming to see him they accepted him as an ordinary man but the ordinary man fisherman they accepted as krishna because they did not they were just fools you know but balabhadra vatacharya hearing the opinion of the public he came to chaitanya mahaprabhu and you see this is what he said at that time balabhadra vatacharya placed a request at the lotus feet of chaitanya mahaprabhu he said please give me permission to go see lord krishna directly he asked chaitanya mahaprabhu please give me permission to go see krishna directly at the kaliya dhaman darshan dar so now the puzzled people who visited sri chaitanya mahaprabhu were actually seeing lord krishna but they were mistaken in thinking that lord krishna had come to kaliya lake because they said you see what they said everyone prabhu aage kahe lok shri krishna dekhila saraswati ei vakya satya kahaila so everyone came before shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and said now we have directly seen lord krishna actually they were referring to the fisherman but actually what they were saying is correct because they have actually now seen krishna thus by the mercy of goddess of learning they were made to speak the truth actually they were speaking false but it is correct because they are actually now seeing krishna but their understanding is not correct you see mahaprabhu dekhi satya krishna darshan nija gyane satya chhadi asatya satya bhrama when people saw Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they actually saw Krishna. But because they were following their own imperfect knowledge, they accepted the wrong thing as Krishna. You see how? That's why we have to know what is what. Both phenomenal and numinous, Krishna is saying. What is spiritual, what is material. If you don't know, you see, you will mix up like this. In the mode of ignorance. This is ignorance. Bhattacharya tabe kahe prabhur charane agnya deho jaya kori Krishna darshane. i will go and see krishna please give me agnya give me give me permission so here the puzzled people who visited sri chaitanya mahaprabhu were actually seeing lord krishna but they were mistaken in thinking that lord krishna had come to kaliya lake they all said that they had seen krishna directly performing his pastimes on the hoods of the serpent kaliya and that the jewels on kaliya's hoods were blazing brilliantly because they were speculating with their imperfect knowledge they saw sri chaitanya mahaprabhu as an ordinary human being and a boatman's light in the lake as krishna one must see things as they are through the mercy of a spiritual master otherwise if one tries to see krishna directly he may mistake an ordinary man for krishna or krishna for an ordinary man or as the 1832 purport says a great man a great soul to be a common man and a common man to be a great soul krishna to be a common man common man to be krishna so they will mistake who is a sadhu and who is krishna and who is a common soul they don't know this is called naivete naivete means being too naive they they do not know that's why we must know what is what and what is correct and what is wrong also we must know and why it is not correct also we must know hmm. so one must see things as they are this is important one must see things as they are through the mercy of a spiritual master otherwise if one tries to see krishna directly he may mistake an ordinary man for krishna or krishna for an ordinary man everyone has to see krishna according to the verdict of vedic literatures presented by the self realized spiritual master we have to see through the statements of the shastras we have to see krishna through the statements of the shastras not our own way these are all not authorized understand if somebody says i saw krishna hey, what is your qualification that you saw krishna you are so great krishna will not show anyone krishna said already bhagavad gita na ham prakash sarvasa not even to ordinary devotees i show myself no you cannot attain me like that one has to be exceptionally on the stage of arjuna prabhupad all the great sir acharyas so continuing everyone has to see krishna according to the verdict of vedic literature presented by the self realized spiritual master a sincere person is able to see krishna through the transparent via medium of sri gurudev one must see things as they are to the mercy of spiritual master everyone has to see krishna according to the verdict 
of uh, again where am i yeah everyone has to see krishna according to the verdict of vedic literatures presented by the self realized spiritual master there is a verse in the bhakti rasamrita sindhu by rupa goswami he said shruti smriti purana adi pancharatra vidhim vina aikantike harer bhakti rutpata yaiva kalpate if we do or claim to have connection with krishna that is not supported in the vedic literature then it is only a disturbance it creates it, it creates a disturbance in the society by making it too cheap it's called sahajya like oh i have seen krishna last night or something like that what is my qualification that i can see krishna where, where is the qualification who am i krishna is so has to come down to my level and show me who am i i'm so great that i can see krishna when goswami is saying when will i see krishna bhakti vinod thakur is saying when will i see krishna of course he is seeing krishna at a different level so a person that's, that's the difference a person who is actually seeing krishna he will say i am i am not seeing krishna um, and a person who does not see krishna he says i am seeing krishna so that's what happened with bhalavadra bhattacharya and all these villagers so unless one is enlightened by the knowledge you see a sincere person is able to see krishna through the transparent via medium of shri gurudev the spiritual master we can only see through that's why who this um, krishna das kavraj goswami or even narottam das thakur they sing rupa raghunath pade hoibe akuti kabe ham bujhavo shri jugala priti unless i have the when will i have the mercy of rupa and rupa goswami and raghunath goswami and by their mercy when will i be able to see the Uh, loving pastimes of radha and krishna when when will this come when will that perfection come kabe habe bolo she din amar you know bhaktuna thakur is singing song kabe habe bolo she din amar when will that day be mine when all the imperfections all the offenses aparadha guchi shuddha name ruchi ha kripa habe bole sanchar so he is saying when will I, when will my offenses stop we are not uh, if i my offenses have not stopped and i can see krishna are that means the shastras are wrong now shastras say unless you are f- free of offenses we cannot see krishna we are full of offenses and if we see krishna the recently that um, prachetas in the bhagavatam class we have gone through that verse where the prachetas after their arduous tapasya they saw they saw vishnu and when they saw vishnu immediately they were full with complete knowledge this is this is proof of seeing krishna not that i saw krishna and i'm still in ignorance how can that be how that cannot be now you may say oh arjuna was in ignorance no that was a drama <laughs> to teach us otherwise arjuna was not in ignorance so once you see krishna there's no difference between seeing krishna and hearing from him so when they see krishna already all the knowledge is there as if they have heard everything there's no difference between seeing krishna and hearing krishna krishna is the same hmm so once one sees krishna there is no krishna surya saman maya andhakar jahan krishna tahan nahi maya radhikar uh, jaha taha jaha means again where and taha means there wherever there is krishna there is no there, where there is sun there is no darkness where there is krishna there is no dark where there is, there is no ignorance so it can be tested it's not that i can claim that i saw krishna but my my actions does not show there So here you see the same thing happen. They say I, we saw Krishna, we saw Krishna, and he is saying I also want to see Krishna. Let me let me go. Unless one is enlightened, you you will get you will see what happens to him in the next verse. Unless one is enlightened by the knowledge given by the spiritual master, he cannot see things as they are, even though he remains constantly with the spiritual master. Another thing, an important point, very very important purport. This is unless one is enlightened by the knowledge given by the spiritual master. he cannot see things as they are even though he remains constantly with the spiritual master that means his instruction the knowledge that he has given is very very important physical proximity is not everything hmm. this incident prabhu says this incident at kaliya daha is very instructive for those eager to advance in krishna consciousness now next verse when balabhadra bhattacharya said when well, bhattacharya said okay please uh, give me permission i want to see go and see krishna इसी वर्ष चैतन्य महाप्रभु जी तबे तारे कहे प्रभु चापड़ मारिया <laughs> मूर्खेर वाक्य मूर्ख होला पंडित कर, पंडित होया दिस इज हाउ ही चैस्टाइज 
तब तबे तारे को है प्रभु चापड़ मारिया चापड़ मीन्स वॉट चापड़ मारिया मीन्स स्लैपिंग ही स्लैप हिम वन बलभद्र भट्टाचार्य आज टू सी कृष्णा एट कालियो दहा श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु मर्सिफुली स्लैप हिम मर्सिफुली स्लैप मीन्स ओ ला नॉट लाइक दिस वन टाइट स्लैप दैट मर्सी मीन्स नॉट लाइक ओहो वाई यू वॉन्ट टू सी कृष्णा वन टाइट वन मर्सिफुली स्लैप मर्सिफुली स्लैप मीन्स नॉट डोंट शो दैट ही डि नॉट गेट इनफ पेन नो 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 मर्सिफुली स्लैप मीन्स सो हार्ड दैट ही फॉर गॉट ऑल हिज इग्नोरेंस दैट इज मर्सिफुली स्लैपिंग मीन्स सो साधु the words of a sadhu sometimes are very very strong it will hit the heart like anything but that is because that chapad you know that verbal chapad that we hear that is necessary for the maya to get, become dislodged from our mind you know so <laughs> to dislodge maya from our mind these kind of slapping words are required from the sadhu sadhu is not meant for spe- sweet talk He is meant for cutting or cutting the Maya that is there. He identifies the Maya and cuts it straight. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mercifully slapped him, saying, "You are a learned scholar, but you have become a fool." You see, murkher vakya, murkha hoyla pandit hoya. You have become a fool, being influenced by the statements of other fools. They are fools saying something nonsense. You have become influenced by them, so you are also fool. So we cannot be influenced by fools. You see, purport. Maya is so strong that even a person like Balabhadra Bhattacharya, who was constantly staying with uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was influenced by the words of fools. You look at this now. How Maya? Now, oh, we are with Krishna. We cannot be influenced. No, no. Maya is always the nikatas. The Maya thare japatiya japatiya thare. The nikatas tha, means very near by. She is standing, not very far, waiting. Oh, he has looked away from Krishna. Grab him. beat him down that's maya how did how did we come from the spiritual world down here we were with krishna what happened maya was also there waiting oh he is not obedient to krishna come let me take care of you come you come here this side go to the material world now i'll take care of you finish so he wanted to see krishna directly by going to kaliya daha but sri chaitanya mahaprabhu being the original spiritual master would not allow his servant to fall into such foolishness this is the thing Now, if we are going astray, the spiritual master will mercifully correct us. Hmm. I may say, oh, if if the spiritual master is not physically around, how will he correct us? Okay, well, Shiksha gurus are there, and Krishna is there as Chaitya guru, and the guru, Sri Prabhu, can act through any of his servants in any way, and Krishna can make any arrangement. Sometimes, okay, for example, um, <laughs> once. One devotee was found in McDonald's eating something nicely. Then, um, you know, uh, other devotee. This was in Singapore. So, then one uh, devotee who was not so strong a devotee, he saw this person in the temple before. Then he saw in McDonald's also is there. Oh. Then he came to the temple. Then he saw. Yeah, I saw the devotee in the in the McDonald's. And, uh, who? No, that that person. I I forgot the name. Prabhu knows him. He he came, no, I saw him. No, no, no. I think it must be somebody else. No, it is him only. He is there. He is standing outside. That same person was I saw him at the house. Really? Oh. Um. Then, uh, so Prabhu asked him, "What? What you were eating in the house?" No, no, no. He said he saw you in the house. You were eating. What you were eating? <laughs> Actually, my friends went there, and I, I, I just, I ate vegetarian. No. Initiated you. So, if we hide and you know try to escape, then Krishna will make some arrangement to expose it. Some way or other. Hmm. Sincere. If we are sincere, then. We'll, they accuse ritvik devotees of oh you don't have a physical spiritual master to correct you okay then what if your so called physical spiritual master he gives you initiation and then passes away how will he connect you how will he communicate with you he therefore chastises him slapping him just to bring him to a real sense of krishna consciousness okay so this is 18.100 right next verse 18.101 krishna kane darshan dibe kali kale कृष्ण कृष्ण कहने दर्शन दिबे खोली खोली काले निज भ्रम है मूर्ख लोक करे कोला हाले सो चेतन चेतन महाप्रभु दास व्हाई वुड कृष्णा अपीयर इन द एज ऑफ कली फूलिश पीपल हु आर मिस्टेकन आर सिंपली कॉजिंग एजिटेशन एंड मेकिंग अ ट्यूमल्ट 
So, <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, oh, what, what was I saying? Eager to hear the story of the devotee. Oh, yes, that um, McDonald's. So, so he, he was saying, oh, I was sorry, actually, I was, um, uh, I was with my friends. I was eating only vegetarian. So, the point is that if, if we try to do something somewhere or somewhere other, we will be caught. So, Krishna will make, if Krishna is merciful <laughs> to us, he will make arrangement for the correction of our mistake. Hmm. It may be embarrassing, but there is a small price to pay rather than live with the mistake and then suffer greatly in the future. A little bit temporary embarrassment is better. He would be That devotee would have been certainly embarrassed. Oh, I got caught. I, I, maybe some, some, some devotees, actually I saw one devotee who was, who said, who, who was found out in a cinema theatre. Somebody came to the temple and said, I met him there, you know, he was uh, in the cinema theatre and all that. Huh? Why are you going to cinema theatre? Oh, sorry. So, th- these kind of things. So, Krishna kene darshan dibe kali kale. So, foolish people. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's first statement, Krishna kene dibe darshan dibe kali kale, refers to the scriptures. According to scripture, Krishna appears in Dwapara, but he never appears as himself in Kali Yuga. Rather, rather he appears in Kali Yuga in a covered form. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32, Krishna varanam tvasha krishnam sango pangastra parshadam. Krishna appears in the age of Kali in the garb of a devotee. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who always associates with his uh, internal soldiers, Advaita Prabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Srivas Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu, Although Balabhadra Bhattacharya was personally serving Lord Krishna in his role as a devotee, Krishna's role as a devotee, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he mistook Lord Krishna for an ordinary man and an ordinary man for Lord Krishna because he did not follow the rules set down by Shastra and Guru. Again, important point. Why he accepted like that? Because he did not follow the rules set down by Shastra and Guru. So, this is all very important. That's how we have to understand what is phenomenal knowledge, what is numinous knowledge. So, uh, Dhira Prabhu is saying, some say being Ritvik disciple is far better as there is no chastisement involved and there is no acceptance of authority. Then don't call yourself and call yourself a disciple in the first place. Ritvik disciple, why, why the word disciple? Disciple means discipline. The word disciple comes from discipline. If there is no discipline, what disciple? Discipline comes means chastisement is, will be, has to be there. Correction has to be there. Guidance has to be there. We cannot live without authority. Sanatha jivitam, not anatha jivitam. We have to have master. Of course, Krishna is our master, but through the proper channel, parampara system, proper bona fide guru, proper siksha gurus, even if I have proper bona fide guru, like Prabhupada's disciples, how many Prabhupada's disciples are there? All fell away like dominoes. So many of them. They had bona fide guru. What was their problem? The problem was they did not follow the instructions of the bona fide guru. Uh, either they were, they did not uh, take advantage of the association of devotees or the association that they were with was not strong enough, they were not following. So, in this way, everything just went downhill. So, even having a bona fide Diksha Guru is not a guarantee. Only if we follow the instructions of the bona fide Guru. And because we may be weak in following the instructions steadily, so we need you know, um, community of devotees who will encourage each other, who will stop each other from not following such, um, um, you know, dictations of the mind and keep us accountable to following the order of the spiritual master. So, when we have such a company, then it becomes easy. Even, even though I may fail, they will pick me up. In fact, that is the prayer, you know, by Krishnadas Kavaraj Goswami. Durga me pathimendas pathimendasya skalat padagater muhu svakrupaya shtidanena santahasantva valambanam. Chaitanya Charitamrita Antilila, Chapter 1, Text 2. My path is very difficult. Krishna Das Kavraj Goswami is saying, My path is very difficult. I am blind and my feet are slipping again and again. 
therefore may the saints or the devotees help me by by granting me the stick of their mercy as their support as my support sorry it's like a you know a blind old man who is walking with a you know walking stick so he his walking stick is his direction and his support you know he needs support you see my feet are slipping so my path is de- so to advance in this de- devotional path yeah we have to be very very cautious hmm. and he says i am blind i need the guidance of devotees and my feet are slipping again and again i need the mercy of the sadhus as my support stick so similarly we are disabled we cannot on our own achieve this but we have to take the mercy of the sadhus who are following properly the bona fide spiritual master and take advantage of such association and correct ourselves authority is necessary okay today most of the comments are only about video and audio it's horrible so first of all worst was no audio in the beginning <laughs> first few minutes was just like no audio mm i think uh, who is this i think i'll i'll end that today's session here and i will i'm taking comments um Dhiradas is asking I have seen devotees celebrating Swami Vivekananda's day is that an offense Most definitely yes What do you mean <laughs> is that an offense Of course it is I mean I I did not know this I mean which uh, Hare Krishna devotee is celebrating Vivekananda's birthday I don't know if if it has come to that I don't know what else to say It's gone I mean absolute rubbish Suvala Prabhu is saying Muchukunda saw Krishna but still had to take birth again. So, of course, he was purified by the darshan of Krishna. That's a, that's the other thing. Like even Bali Maharaj saw Krishna, but he will still become an Indra in the next life. Of course, Muchukunda. Again, Krishna has some plan. You see, um, he has to take birth again, and I think who will he take birth as? something is also mentioned as a pure devotee so so that's the thing you know when like demigods like indra he did the he poured the rain on vrindavan and then he came and surrendered how many times the demigods are seeing krishna and then after some time he fought with krishna again for the parijat flower i just realized you know that he is a fool number 1 you know trying to defeat krishna with the rain and krishna held up govardhan leela and he was having loving past times with his gopi friends and everybody having a good time and then with effortlessly he defeated indra and um, a few years later which is for demigods few days later maybe even and then again he is fighting with the krishna for the parijat flower where is the brain you know so they are seeing krishna multiple times <laughs> but of course it's also part of the plan but it also shows that when i have desires then krishna can come right in front of me just like the villagers they came right in front of chaitanya mahaprabhu and said we have seen krishna what they said is correct because they were seeing krishna but they did not mean it you know <laughs> so so likewise when i come with desires then krishna can come right in front of me i will not be able to recognize then i will not surrender so ye yatha mam prapadyante tam sathaiva bhajami ham so krishna we have to of course we have to fully surrender and then because krishna when he comes like for example he was right in front of all the kauravas in the battlefield of kurukshetra they were seeing him right in front in fact the pandavas were seeing the back of krishna the kauravas were seeing the front of krishna and not only in the battlefield but also otherwise they saw krishna so many times but still they were because they desire because naham prakash sarvasya yoga maya samavrtah they actually did not see krishna so seeing krishna means you see naam prakash sarvas is like a curtain kunti dev explains he antar bahiravasthitam but alakshase moodha drisha 
like we also krishna is everywhere parmatma every single atom are we seeing him well he is right in front of us actually but we are not similarly they also did not see krishna actually they thought he was an ordinary man they did not see, understand this krishna it's like when we see a pure devotee we don't understand he is a pure devotee and those who don't understand they don't take advantage and then they just miss the miss the miss the chance of getting liberated and you see krishna kunti devi says namasye purusham dvadyam ishwaram prakrite param alaksham sarva bhutanam antarbahir avasthitam i offer my obeisance to krishna and to you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world you are existing both within and without everything yet you are invisible to all so actually he was invisible to the kauravas in the sense that he was not known they will not see they did not see him as the supreme personality god his real opinions was hidden to them because naam prakash sarva yoga maya samavat mudhoyam naam jana dev mudha not sure. next was maya javani ka chhannam agnyad hoksha chamagyam nalakshase mudha drisha nato natya dharo yatha natya dharo yatha being beyond range of limited sense perception you are the eternally irreplaceable factor covered by the curtain of the living energy you are invisible to the foolish observer exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized so avajanand mamudha manushim tanu ashritam so it's as if he is disguised as a human being so just like an actor dressed as a player is not recognized if he is makeup is so good that he cannot he is not recognized as oh that person so similarly krishna when he comes he is so good with his makeup of as a something a human being that people cannot recognize him even though they see him but because of prachetas they saw him out of because they were favorably disposed toward him uh, the thing acted now even though dhruva maharaj had a material desire but he favorably wanted to get the mercy of vishnu but kauravas they had material desire but they did not want to get the mercy of krishna they were not favorably disposed toward you know krishna they wanted to act against his devotees especially kauravas which they did vaishnava prad like anything pandavas were vaishnavas and when vaishnavas are offended krishna will not reveal um so so different reasons why krishna chooses them to take birth sometimes like bali maharaj you know he will become next uh, indra and all these things why why pure devotee and that is krishna's plan that a pure devotee rule the, just like brahma is a pure devotee he is ruling the universe hmm, like that so but the thing is if one is favorably disposed toward krishna krishna comes and immediately they will be full of knowledge surya sama because the maya andhakar the curtain of maya maya javanika javanika means curtain achhanam means covered by hmm. Urvashi worshipped Lord Vishnu, uh, but his infatuation for Urvashi remained there, which eventually van- vanished after a course of time. Yeah. So anyway, so once we connect with the Lord, eventually the purification starts, and eventually we will, you know, like every day we are looking at the deity, but we are we are not full devoid of offences. So. we cannot communicate with the deity like shri prabhu does or you know any pure devotee does mm, but prabhu is different so we cannot imitate that we have to be where we are and uh, just become follow the instructions of the pure devotee and then qualify ourselves mm. all right so let's just observe something what is happening in the how how you all are seeing the live stream i think i'll see that later so i think i'll stop it right there thank you very much for your time sorry for the all the inconvenience with the audio and video especially the audio hopefully i can uh, fix that next time Oh, some big question. Oh, <laughs> I would have just missed it. Okay, Divya Mataji is asking. Ah, and Dr. Nam always Prabhu Hari Krishna. Your authentic explanations most of the time are like mercy slap and our ignorance. Sorry, sorry. I don't. Know. So, so much for these. Thank you so much for these lectures. My doubt is regarding rigid faith on Guru Shastra and Sadhu. Sometimes, while blindly accepting, we may feel like a stone without any enthusiasm, and we may not actually know exactly what we are doing. We may think we are following strictly, but we may be wrong. When knowledge is present in front of us, we sometimes don't know how to use it as per time and circumstance. And if we try to change as per time and circumstance, it may be like distorting the spiritual master's statements. How to exactly be lively with strong faith, being logical, and yet without distorting Guru's guidance? <clears throat> so, good question. So, if we have, if we blindly accept what from the Sadhu Shastra and Guru, we don't have to be like a what? What is it? Stone. <laughs> But we feel like if we if we're not lively, that means we're not accepting the process. Okay. If we really accept the process, we will, we will feel lively. There's no way it will not feel lively, and if it is not feeling lively, then we're not accepting the process. Something somewhere is amiss. 
we have to question what we are doing uh, we have to have a checklist of what am i doing uh, off and if i am not able to find out and if i talk to the devotees uh, they will experience the devotees i mean so then yes then they will point out okay you should not do this you should do like this you should do like this okay correct this correct that so and then we will have okay plan of action so time place and circumstance how we know what to apply and where to apply and how to apply when to apply um so this also we will get the intelligence from the guru now how to get how do how do we get this intelligence that's why we have to study what shri prabhupada has done by his mercy his activities his lectures his letters his audio is so much recorded and we can learn a lot from that how he dealt with everything and yes our situation may be a little bit different uh, but the same principles apply so if we this all comes with our, our um faith implicit faith yasya deve para bhaktir yatha deve tatha gurau tasya te kathitha hi artha prakashante mahatmana shweta shwetra upanishad 6.23 um unless one has implicit faith in guru and krishna we will not be given the intelligence adam buddhi yogam tam no the intelligence he will give us as much as we surrender sometimes sometimes we think we are surrendered um <clears throat> when we are not actually surrendered so <laughs> we need to if we read regularly this is one thing that will undoubtedly solve all problem if we read regularly then and if we practice over time we will get this what is correct and what is wrong and what is to be followed how to apply in time place and circumstances according to time place and circumstances uh one second kunti mataji is saying that you pause many times speak like a train and your voice speaks fast mm. it's i am speaking like that or the audio is coming out like that because i think the audio is showing so <coughs> so anyway the point is that um we cannot distort the spiritual masters yes, it's very fast and breaking oh wow that's not good now that's not at all good but for me it's absolutely actually i can see that my laptop is somehow somehow overworked i don't know what the issue is i need to figure out so anyway um what was i saying yeah so if we have strong faith then we will be logical we will be lively and we will not be distorting guru's guidance at all we have strong faith all right thank you very much hari krishna bhagavad gita ki jai shri prabhupada ki jai anantapur vaishnava vrinda ki jai nitai gaur mangal hari hari bol hari krishna